So we're here at the ID Tech X show, and uh, who are you? My name is Radu Rait. Uh, I'm the CTO of Aries Materials, uh, and we're making novel polysulfide polymers for flexible electronics. And uh, who are you? I am Jesus Espinosa. I'm a process development scientist at Aries Materials. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so we have a lot of different materials. Uh, what you're looking at here is one of our flagship products, uh, Pilux MF, uh, which was used as a substrate for thin film transistor microfabrication. So here you have an array, a model array of uh, metal oxide, IGZO, uh, thin film transistors that were fabricated on Pilux that is uh, using silicon wafer as a carrier for the microfabrication, uh, which is the state of the art currently in the industry. So microfabrication, uh, yeah. what, uh, <laughs> what is it about? Yeah, so essentially all of the electronics that are made today, including your phone and the display in your phone uh, are currently made by microfabrication. So what that means is you take your substrate, you take your plastic or your silicon, and you start defining uh, pixels onto it by putting down a blanket layer of metal and then etching that metal away until you get the defined pixel. So what we do is we want to move away from using glass or silicon as a substrate and instead move to plastics, like our Pilux materials. Uh, currently, the industry, like Samsung and LG and all these guys, they're making these transistors, they're making these displays. To make them flexible, they make them on polyimid. This is a pretty old material from the 1950s, and it's got a lot of disadvantages. This one specifically is very high stress, so it curls up into a little tight circle like this. With our materials, we eliminate that color. We have a completely optically transparent material. This one is Optically isn't. transparent. Yeah. And IGZO. See through it. It has IGZO. This one doesn't, but yeah, these are the transistors using IGZO. But what is that? So this is another one of our materials. This is called Pilux W. This is a stretchable, or not a stretchable, excuse me. This is an optically clear adhesive uh, for use in uh, protecting your display. So this is uh, also going to be a shock absorber when you put it in between the display module and the cover lens. So if you drop something on your phone, if you drop something on the glass, this will protect it from uh, breaking the actual pixels. So uh, when you're talking about pixels, does that mean displays? Yeah. Are you you're making displays or are you making other stuff too? That's a great question. So we don't make the displays. We like to make the materials for other people to make the displays. It's mainly pretty... for display at the end. It's mainly for display, display applications, yeah. exactly. So something like a... uh, like this. Yeah, maybe. the curved uh, curved phones, the curved displays, iPhone X, and the plastic display that it uses. Um, essentially, we want to replace the uh, the materials that they're currently using with some of our higher performance. Films. ATB is our temporary bonding agent. Um, whenever you do all this microfabrication uh, on plastic, you're actually doing it on plastic that's on a carrier, like in this case, the silicon. So you need to, at the very end, release the plastic from the silicon carrier. So to do that, we use a temporary bonding layer, uh, high temperature cap capable, withstands temperatures well in excess of 500 Celsius, and it's actually compatible with uh, what the industry is using right now, the polyimid films. Uh, but we use it to delaminate our Pilux films from the carriers. So it works. I hope so. Because uh, <laughs> so you have this uh, cool looking thing here, but yeah. there's something flexible on top that you t mm -hmm. you peel off. Yeah. So this is the silicon wafer. Um, you can see right here. There's a little seam right there. That's actually our film. Our material is on the actual wafer right here. So if you get a little. Uh, and yeah, it's expensive. There. So don't, don't, exactly. Don't We're not going to break it today. Um, this How one's not on the wafer. With us. Oh, just this one in general in the world <laughs> in the world are you in big production or no what? no no so we make the materials right so it's all the display manufacturers like samsung like lg those are the guys that are actually doing this on are they buying glass this from you yet? we're uh, not at liberty to say who is and who is not buying anything from us so is that gonna change the whole market if it works or absolutely not? because nobody else is doing this the way you're doing or? nobody else is doing it as great as we are uh, we essentially combine a lot of uh, technological improvements with our materials and cost reduction, which is really going to make us succeed in the end compared to the current incumbents. So how old is your company and how many people are there? Yeah, yeah so we've got uh, 10 people uh, between full-time and part-time employees. Uh, we founded in 2014, but really started picking up last year when uh, investors gave us money. And where are you based? Based in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so is how soon is mm -hmm. things going to happen more and more? In this, yeah. Uh, what, What's next? What's next? Well, next is integrating these products into the next revolution of displays. Uh, a couple of big companies are coming out with dynamic form factor displays, uh, ones that can bend and fold. Um, so we're hoping that within the next year or two, uh, our products will be integrated into those materials. And how does it 
price compared with the, mm -hmm. this stuff? So it's going to be uh, around the same price scale as this in terms of the raw material, but where the, uh, the customers are really saving money is how much it takes to actually process them. The time that they save and the uh, equipment reduction that they yield uh, actually lowers the cost significantly for them. How do, how do you place pixels on this kind of stuff? How does yeah. it work? Yeah, so it, it's a process. We we're talking about microfabrication. Uh, essentially, you use big tools to deposit films of metals, uh, to deposit films of insulators, and then selectively etch those away to make your circuitry. That's how all modern microelectronics are made. And it just works. It just works. And the display looks good. And it good. works better with pilots. The display is going to look good? I hope so. Uh, is it, it going to look like an iPhone or what's yeah. it going to look like? It's going to look like an better? even better iPhone. Even better. Like yeah. You can have high resolutions. Yeah. Very so, bright. Exactly. So the, the optical advantages of our material, how transparent the material actually is. Um, there's a, a feature known as birefringence. Uh, so uh, basically optical um, uh, evenness of the film, uh, all of those features actually lead to higher light transmission through our materials, uh, better light transmission and diffusion through the materials. Uh, so it actually leads to better picture quality if using this in the optical path of the display. And then you can add some touch that could be maybe silver nanowires yep. or something. Yep. Yeah, we and that's another company, integrate. right? That's another company. And then everything works, and then and everything works. And batteries <laughs> need to be flexible too. Eventually, for sure. Um, I think in the next year or so, we'll see phones that are foldable where the screens fold, but the batteries are probably still going to be rigid. And what's your background? Have you been working in this kind of stuff before, or just come so, directly uh, from the university, or? Yeah, we uh, we actually started from the University of Texas at Dallas. Uh, I got my PhD in biomedical engineering, uh, and doing no longer any biomedical engineering. Uh, I did a lot of the materials, chemistry, and, and design. 